all right today we are going to see the solution of product mix problem using excel solver before going to the detail you need to see where can you find the files the files are available online so if you go to nabid.weebly.com there you can see a Google Drive link called MIS460 if you click there it will take you to the MIS460 Google Drive in the left file we have a folder called product mix inside this you will have the product mix problem and also the problem template you can download these two and start work I already have downloaded these in my desktop so these are the two files you, you can download let's look into the template first you can see we have two problems problem one and problem two and these are the problems prompt so which we will see so let's do the problem one first before uh, solving it we just need to see that in the product mix problem we should have multiple products and we just have to find out how much to produce in these products so that we can maximize our profit so that's it our goal is to maximize profit so product mix problem is one of the problems in linear programming so we should have some goal maximize profit in this instance we should have some changing variables some arbitrary values we have to put we will see and we have some constraints and these constraints are classical constraints for the product mix problems labor constraint raw material constraint the demand constraint and the non-negative constraint let's see how it goes before that we have to input all these values so just please track please document back and forth while I'm doing it so now I'm going to solve it using the solver So for product 1, product 2, product 3, product 4, we are given several information, you can see. So I'm going to input those. One after another. Giving input is a very crucial thing, because if you do any mistake here, your solution will not be the same as correct. we have the unit price given we have the variable cost given we have the demand given but we do not have the unit profit contribution so for that we just need to deduct variable cost 
from the unit sum. So T6 minus T7. And then we can try this. Drag this. We also know that how much lever is there. So con from the constraint, you can see that we have 4500 lever available. And from the constraint, you can see that we have 1600 materials available. Other than these, there are no information given. Now, we have to find out how much should be our profit given how much to produce these so this time around we just have to put some arbitrary value any value you can put this value we will use to build the model usually you can mark arbitrary value with some other color so that you can recognize it in order to find out the profit you can use the formula called sum product here in the sum product we have to multiply the array d2 i2 with the array of unit profit contribution d9 i in order to find out the total labor you all we also can use the sum product this time around we multiply the array d2 i1 with the array d4 I4. For the total raw material, another sum product D2 I2 I multiplied with D5 I5. So, yes, all of our values are populated now. Now we see how can we solve it. The solver tool can be found in the menu called data but if it's not there if in your data menu you cannot find solver then you need to add solver from file option add-ins excel add-ins go and you can add it you see it's checked that's why I am having it here if it's unchecked then you can check it and you can get the solver in your data menu Yes, we have the solver now, so I right click it. We have to set the objective. We know that our objective is to maximize the profit. So our variable is D12. We want to maximize it. We want to maximize the profit by producing products. So that green zone is our arbitrary value, D2, I2. Now we set some constraint, one after another. The first is the lever constraint. D14 is less than equals D14 is less than equals F14. We add the second constraint, which is the raw material constraint. D15 is less than equals F15. We'll add the third constraint, which is the demand constraint. So our production cannot be greater than the demand so d2 i2 should be less than equals d8 i8 so all the three constraints are at one more constraint left that's called non-negative constraint for that you don't need to add any constraint here rather you just need to check it says that make unconstrained variables non-negative unconstrained variables means the changing variables non-negative so i can we produce in negative no Thus, we have to make sure that these values, the changing values, will not be negative while we are solving it. It should be positive or zero. The solving method we will use is the simplex LP. So all of these are set. Currently, you know, the profit is 7940, but this is not the best we can do. So if we hit solver, our problem will be solved. Now I click OK. You see, that is our maximum profit we can get from this situation. It's solved. Let's go to the problem 2.
So, if you read the problem too, you can see that the constants are not given one after another. Rather, the constants are actually in written form. But you can see that here, here, th you can spot only two constants. But we all know that for product problem, we need four constants. So even if it's not here, we have to have four constants. Let's see how can we solve this. It's, it's easier problem. Let's do it. Labor is given. Machine time is given. Monthly demand is given. Unit profit contribution is given. Now we don't know how much to produce this so once again we just put some arbitrary value here and I'm going to mark it. By the way the unit profit contribution can be also written as profit per unit. In order to find out the profit we will use some product d to f2 comma the profit contribution d7 is for for total labor we'll use some product d to f2 d4 f4 for machine time use we use some product D to F2, comma, D5, F5. In the question, we also can find total labor is 13,000 and total machine hour is 3,000. So yes, our model is set. Now we will solve it. We go to data. We hit on solve. Our objective is definitely to maximize the profit. So D10 should be maximized by changing variable is our d to f2 that's the arbitrary one now we have to add three constant here and one constant here. there are four constant we have to add so the lever constant d12 less than equal f12 d13 less than equal f13 D to F2 is less than equals D6 F6. So we add all those three, and our next constant should be the non negative one. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we even from the question, we can't export all the four here, but we need all the four constants. Solving matrix simplex. If we hit solve, we should get the result. And that's it. That's our result. So from the given scenario, this is the maximum profit we can get. Thanks for watching.